Hi friends, this is Daniel Research and welcome to the part number 17 of Cryptocurrency Trading Bot Tutorial. In the previous video we have created functions that request real-time ticker data through WebSockets from Bitfinex Exchange. And in this video we will use this real-time ticker data to update technical indicators and find trading opportunities. Let's make a quick recap of the code we added last time. In function bfix trade, we open WebSockets and subscribe to ticker channels for each pair we trade. Also, because WebSockets are very buggy, we have to restart them approximately every two hours by closing and reopening sockets again. Also, we created a function get prices that listens to channels and updates prices object. Prices object is for every pair we trade and it contains three properties like last price, high price and low price. Last price is simply taken from the channel data and high price and low price are calculated by comparison of last price and previous high and low values. And finally, we created a helper function reset prices that drops high and low price in prices object for every pair. We'll use this function to drop high and low prices in the end of 30 minutes time frame. So we'll do this every time when time, frames, time frame expires. To start calculating high and low prices from the scratch on the next time frame. Now let's work with manager of the JS file and its runbot function. We have to make some changes to the code in order to use bfix.prices object instead of market data object in update indicators function and so on. So let's firstly let's clean up the code a little bit. Let's remove all unnecessary parts and leave only this loop with update indicators. So instead of market data we will use pairs object and instead of market data here we will simply use bfx.prices object and as you remember this prices object contains last price, high price and low price. So this price is currently a bfx prices object so instead of array we will use object for every pair like pair here we need last price last price so let's simply copy and paste this object every, everywhere where we use last price here and here. Like you know ATR and ADX require also high and low price so let's put here high price high price here and here low price low price. Great, now we use live ticker data in update indicators and find trade opportunities function. Well, is this everything what we need to do? Well, certainly not. Because what will happen if we try to run this code? Firstly, we will request historical data and field technical indicators with historical data we have till 130. And right after we have filled technical indicators, we will run this loop and start trading. But we will update firstly technical indicators with data which is for 151. And in this case we will create some biased 
technical indicators results and which will lead to inaccurate trading results. That is why we have to create some delay that will avoid trading till 2 p.m. in our case or till the end of the, of the current time frame period. Very easy actually to create such delay. So let's create some variable and call it delay. And this variable equals to current time frame period length. So it is 1800 seconds. Or let's make it in milliseconds minus current timestamp. So date dot now it is also in milliseconds modulus time frame period length that's that's all and let's make some console message like console log trading starts in delay minutes so let's divide this by 60,000 to have minutes and finally we have to wrap this for loop into set timeout function set timeout function and set timeout with our delay. Okay, let's cut and paste this code inside this function. Well, now our code looks better, but some other improvements required. When trading finally starts, this for loop will run only once and update indicators will be called only once for every pair. But we want this loop and function inside it to be called every 30 minutes. So let's add some uh, extra set interval function. Set interval function and let's call this function every 30 minutes. So let's copy that. And let's cut and paste this code here again. And in the end of every 30 minutes interval, we must reset prices object. So we must reset high and low prices. For this we'll call the fix reset prices function for each pair. Well, now our code looks much better. This set interval function will create yet another 30 minutes delay. So we have to copy and paste this loop twice. So we will call this loop first time when trading is enabled. And for every future case, we'll run this loop every 30 minutes, so after 30 minutes delay. And finally, we have to move find trade opportunity function inside run bot function. Because we should not wait 30 minutes in order to open or close position, especially if we need immediately execute stop loss order. So let's move this function somewhere here below this set interval. Let's copy it and wrap it into another for loop. Like four pair in pairs, find trade opportunity and instead of pair, uh, price 
pair object we input bfx prices object and we'll call this function let's say every 20 seconds so let's wrap it into set interval function every 20 seconds okay let's copy this loop here well now we are done with real time ticker data let's save everything and try to run the code Projects, Blade Runner, Node, and Optimize.js. Well, we need to wait 13 and a half minutes, so it's approximately till 2.30 before trading starts. But as of now, everything seems pretty okay. You may test real-time data trading on your computer or you may deploy both somewhere in the cloud. So for this case I recommend you to use OpenNode. It's very easy to deploy, easy to install cloud-based Node.js hosting and you will be very happy with their plans. So they accept bitcoins as a payment and you may save 10% but their pricing is where is very nice and they have free option for testing environment like ours. So if you like you may sign up and deploy your Blade Runner bot in OpenNode.io environment. Well, this is all for today. We have completed implementation of real-time or live pricing data request. So let's move it into the done tab. And once we complete debugging of our trading board, we will be able to start implementation uh, of trade executor. We will be able to make a limit order placement, checking order, canceling order, and checking our balance before and after every trade. Thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe to my channel if you want more videos. And leave your questions in the comment section below. Bye.